Texans wide receivers coach Robert Prince with us on Texans radio coach. How's it going? Coaching in the off season, coaching your group so far. Uh, it's been great to work with these guys. Uh, you know, first of all, those guys, uh, they're very willing workers and, and learners. And, uh, you know, we've been trying to put on a clinic every day with uh, different techniques. Coach, one of the things that has been referred to you as a CEO, the chief energy officer, where does that come from? Why, why were you given that moniker? I mean, we watch you out on the field. We can see the energy. But where does that come from? How, how did that kind of develop for you as a coach to be that guy that has all that energy that kind of raises up the room uh, with that energy, if you will. Well, shoot, I don't know exactly where it started, but, um, you know, it might have been way back when uh, I was at Fort Lewis College, Durango, Colorado, back in uh, 94 uh, with our staff. It was me. I was the offense coordinator. Gus Bradley was the defensive coordinator. Oh, wow. Uh, Todd Wash was our D-line coach. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we had a pretty good staff and, uh, you know, we had some back and forth and, you know, it was just the way that we, uh, you know, it was just kind of our style. And we went some back, we went back and forth and uh, had some good battles, but, um, you know, it's, it's a great profession to be in. And, you know, I love coaching and, you know, it, they say every day is a holiday when you love your job and I just go out there and, you know, have some fun. What do you work on with the guys this time of year? And how is that different from what you'll be doing in training camp, other than the fact that you'll be wearing pads a bit in training camp, coach? Well, the thing that's great right now is uh, we can slow things down and really work on our, our fundamentals. And, you know, Coach Kelly's a big, big uh, believer in fundamentals. And that's what we're working on. We're working on, you know, from stance and start to the stem of the route, to the breakdown, to the catch. And our blocking technique, it's great to be able to take our time and really work on those fundamentals. Coach, we talk all the time about when players go from place to place, they've got to learn a new offense. But coaches sometimes have to learn a new offense, too. How is that transition for you in learning a new offense? You Listen, you've been coaching receivers for a long time. You know all the routes and all that. But how is it learning the new offense, the new verbiage and everything that goes with it so that you can communicate it to your players and they learn it as well? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's different uh, words for the same things that we've done. You know, some might, someone might call it peanut butter. Someone calls it jelly. You know, just got to just kind of translate it in your head and, you know, I say the synapses are sometimes a little bit further apart and then, you know, just got to get used to uh, the terminology and, you know, just like with the players, uh, coaches got to get used to it as well. Well, this probably happens in a lot of situations. You've coached a lot of good receivers, but here you have Brandon Cooks, who's an established veteran. You also have Nico Collins, rookie coming in. So uh, tell us a little bit about the group and what you see so far in them anyway, coach. Uh, you know, like I said at the beginning, uh, all of them are, are willing learners, including Brandon and uh, the other veterans, uh, you know, just trying to learn the, the fundamentals and the techniques that we're talking about now uh, going forward. And, you know, they're all they're all willing to work. And, and Brandon's, you know, been the leader of the guys. And, you know, when they see him, how he works, they're like, OK, they're going to fall in line. Coach, receivers have all different kind of traits They're big guys, small guys, some play in the slot. Some play outside, some step in the backfield. But overall, if somebody came to you, young person said, I want to be a receiver, what would be the one thing you would tell that particular young man or woman that this is what you need to be successful at every single level of being a wide receiver? Uh, number one rule for receiver is to get open and catch the ball. That, that's the main thing. Right. I mean, as simple as that, you got to be yep. able to get open and catch the ball. That means a lot of different things to certain people. Uh, if I'm a smaller person, then, you know, I probably need to create a little bit more separation. If I'm a big guy, I might have someone on me and I just can, I'm still open because of my catching radius. So, you know, to, to, to make it in the simplest terms, you know, get open and catch the ball. Right, because when you're coaching a guy like you had Megatron, right, in Detroit, and then you have other guys who might not have that kind of catch radius or that ability, but you want to get the most out of their ability, that's got to be a big challenge as a coach, right? Uh, for sure. You know, like you said, uh, had Calvin Johnson, uh, Hall of Famer, had Kenny Galladay. Uh, mm -hmm. Both those guys were, were big targets. And then I had uh, other guys, Marvin Jones, who was 
you know, a six foot guy. And I had Golden Tate, who was a, a smaller stout, but, you know, very powerful uh, person. Also had Anquan Bolden later in his life. Uh, but that guy, I mean, you can have a guy draped all over him. He was going to catch the ball. Greatest high school player I ever saw, Anquan Bolden, was unbelievable. Coach, last year, we, we've talked about, you know, the COVID year of 2020, and it was so tough. It was hard on so many different people, and I know it had to be hard on, on you guys as coaches. But in the end, how did last year help you become a better coach? Maybe it didn't, but how do you feel like last year helped you overall? Uh, that's a great question. Um, first of all, I, I think every coach in America learned the term Zoom and having a Zoom meeting, I mean, I, I've never even heard of that before. And yeah, uh, had to find the ways to uh, reach the players and have them engaged uh, over these meetings. Uh, you know, guys had to learn uh, what these Zoom meetings were going to be about. They're, they're not FaceTime calls. They're not just, you know, relaxed atmospheres. Um, they had to treat those Zoom meetings just like they're in a team meeting, you know, sitting at a desk notepad out ready to take notes and you know that's where it started from is uh you know you had to start your meetings that way and establish it and uh guys were great about it coach a little bit about your background you were born in japan and how much have you been able to get back i know it's so busy being a coach did you coach in japan did we hear that correctly uh yes i did so i was uh i'm half japanese i was born in japan lived there till i was seven so I grew up uh, speaking both Japanese and English, came to the United States, uh, like I said, when I was seven, um, really didn't go back until uh, I got a job over there mm -hmm. in 96. And I actually coached a, uh, a Japanese corporate team and we lived there for, for two years. So, uh, you know, my Japanese kind of came back and uh, it was a great experience. Uh, you know, my wife got a chance to go and, uh, learn Japanese and my son was born over there and yeah, it was a great experience. And then I went back a couple times for um, the preseason games when we used to have them over there. When I interned with the Niners, we went back. And then yeah. when I was coaching for the uh, Falcons, we had a game over there. How does the corporate team thing work in Japan? Oh, it was great. So basically it would be like, let's say uh, Ford Motor Company has a team and they said, hey, John, we want you to play for our team. Um, tell you what, uh, you just graduated. If you come play for our team, we'll start you at this managerial position making this much money. So that's how we got the players. And um, there were different wow. levels. But uh, it was great. And uh, we got a chance to uh, play over there. And uh, we won the uh, corporate national championship. And then what's different over there is they have the corporate team and then they have obviously like their college teams and the corporate champions play the college champion for the national championship. So it'd be like the college champion playing the NFL champion, which, you know, obviously two different levels here, but over there, it's a, uh, it's a pretty fair playing field, man. I can imagine the recruiting stories are nuts. Coach last one for me. <laughs> How do you say rock and roll in Japanese? Uh, Rock and roll. I'd probably just say uh, gambaro or gambate. There you go, Mark. Yeah. He's, there you go, he's Mark. Saying you better that, have I say that. Year. I say that after touchdown sometimes. So that's why he's asking you that, All Coach. Right. Uh, but one more for me. So you were in Atlanta when our buddy Matt Schaub was there as the quarterback. You were assistant quarterbacks coach? Uh, yeah. So um, I was in Atlanta 2004, 5, 6. Um, mm -hmm. Tell you what, if, if you want a Matt Schaub story. So uh, yes. Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I, I love Matt Schaub. So, I mean, I tell this story to this day. So he was great. What, what a great learner. I used to have to, you know, date myself. We used to fax the game plan to the guys Tuesday night. Right. And then so Wednesday morning when they come in, uh, you know, in the quarterback meeting, you could say to, to Shabby, say, hey, Shabby, um, you know, how are we running uh, Z drive this week? And he said, OK, hey, we're going to go double Z short. Or we're also going to run it out of trips. You know, he could tell you either way. You can ask him, hey, what plays are we running out of, uh, you know, trips right uh, Z short or whatever? And he could just roll a Dex in his head. Uh, just a smart guy. Um, mm -hmm. There was also a clip where we said, hey, listen, this play, we run this play. If you get two, uh, two man, 
understand you got to be your own check down and you got to take off running. And sure enough, I think it was like the third preseason game. Maybe we're playing Minnesota. They play two man. And then he takes off and runs. I'm like, I said, that guy's going to be a good player one day. Mm, and he was good for us. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. Best of luck. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.